Okay, so the car's cut apart, everything's out. Um, let me show you what we did. So you'll see I'm standing where the fuel tank was, where that old torsion beam system was, where the struts were, the inner fender wells and everything else. So all this has been buzzed out, made a lot of room. There is absolutely no issue of this rear subframe fitting now uh, in this space. So on top of that, and, and more than just the cutting, I went ahead and took out uh, a bit more material here and added a two inch by four inch box beam as eighth inch wall. This will serve as kind of the pickup point and some of the starting points of a lot of the rear suspension, uh, trailing arm pickups, as well as just something square and easy to weld a lot of things to. I did weld everything to the uh, the floor plan, pan, <clears throat> the, the little bit of it that remained. I don't know if it's a waste of time or not, but we'll see. And I've started to figure out kind of what I want for suspension geometry. I'll show you underneath here really quick, but it's welded to, that's the position right here. That's where the old torsion beam mounted and bolted. There's a heavy part of the car, several layers of material thick there. So anyway, it was an excellent way just to keep the structure of the car up to this point and just connect the two halves by just slicing this thing off pretty square and you know welding this beam directly to it. Um, so it worked out pretty well. Both sides are done. Nice and flat. Uh, but yeah, ge geometry wise, I, I think I have some opportunity here. So this car, when I take it to VIR and you're coming down from 130 miles an hour or something like that, uh, it's not the most stable. Even with the rear wing, it was better, but it also created quite a bit of drag and I noticed a couple mile an hour off my top speed. So ultimately, you know, I want to do a flat floor. I want to make the car more slippery, but I also want a little bit more downforce and stability under the brakes. I really think there's time at VIR specifically and other big tracks that I am losing uh, because of my braking ability. And so we're starting to solve that problem with a bigger brake kit on the front, which has not been tested, but I think I have a lot of opportunity to help myself here. So with that being said, and, and, and why I'm going down this rabbit hole is I did scribe out where the OEM geometry is for a Mark 7 GTI, as well as some additional points of geometry that I think that can help me with the anti-lift in the rear under the brakes. So here's how I'm looking at it net today. The OEM position I think is gonna be really good, assuming that it gives me more rear lift. Uh, this is gonna be great for, for the autocross uh, spectrum that this car drives in. Wife and I still like to do a bit of autocross every now and then, and this would be an easy way to drop this position to something that's a little bit more loose, especially where aero or certainly something like a flat floor and a diffuser doesn't really help. However, when we get to the bigger tracks, we want more stability. I believe that I can get into this anti-lift position with the rear trailing arms and geometry of this car. And so I've went ahead and the lower line here represents the lower ball joint in the front. So it's center of rear hub to lower ball joint. From what I understand, that's what the OE factory or you know Volkswagen engineers have done on the Mark 7. The plus 20, which I'm stealing that terminology, I don't really know what the plus 20 means, I'm stealing that terminology from uh, other suspension companies, but this upper line represents uh, the geometry matching the center of the front hub, center of the rear hub, and this is then therefore the line. Uh, so it's flat across that. I could then shoot towards the closer to the upper part of the tire in the front and add more anti-lift and I might just take this dimension and just multiply it up by two and, and stick another one there. So I'll have several different positions just for fun. Um, but you know, I don't wanna lose this opportunity to really dial in more anti-lift in the rear, especially that now that I know, or I've always known there's a bit of an issue with this car on bigger tracks. It's not a modern car. It has a shorter wheelbase and a lot of modern stuff. I really think that could help. In addition to that, I'm also adding about two inches of wheelbase. So I think this is around a 97 inch wheelbase car. I'd like to get it to around an even 100. Um, I think that's also gonna help on stability. I think I can tune that out at autocross with a bigger rear sway bar or maybe a smaller tire or more tire pressure. Um, but on the bigger tracks, again, adding stability just adds confidence. And I really think that's, that's a, a, just a faster way around the track for me, especially, is having a lot of confidence in the car, especially under the brakes. So the position of the rear wheels was about right here. Uh, I believe it's somewhere 
it's just off center. So it's something like right here uh, with this new rear subframe position and that box beam. So this is going to be all good things. I, I think I try to think of every different aspect the car uh, is poor at and try to f make this solution help that area as best as possible, basically. There will be a fuel cell here is what I'm thinking. In front of the subframe, I can get that that fuel mass down below, much, much more below the, the center of gravity. Even though it's in front, it probably doesn't help with my rear bias as much as I could because it's still obviously a very light rear car. Um, but I hope to put like the battery, uh, fire suppression system, things like that will be back here. Uh, if I do go for a wing, it'll be tied to the back as well. And, um, you know, I thought about rear mount radiator, but I, I'm not going to play that game right now. I think everything's running fine, especially with this 190 horse motor. Just leave it simple. Keep it up front. It's only a couple pounds. It's not worth the complexity. Uh, but anyway, just wanted to catch everybody up on where we're at right now. And um, subframes over there on the workbench. We'll talk about that next time. Hopefully it'll have a sub subframe tied to that, which will be the framing that gets welded into the car. And uh, I'll get to demonstrate what I'm thinking about for that. So, anyway, thanks.